week nine of the fantasy baseball season. And here's a few pitches I look to buy this week. The first pitcher, George Kirby of the Seattle Mariners. So Kirby, it's been an up and down season for him so far. Kirby last year, a solid year, 13 and 10 with a 3.35 ERA. This season, 62 win a third, four and five record, 57 Ks, a 4.33 ERA, 1.03 whip and five quality starts. But the last couple weeks, he's been batting practice, 12 innings, 0-2 record, six Ks, Seven and a half ERA, a 1.33 whips of Kirby. The problem with him, and I've mentioned it in videos early in the season, that he's throwing too many strikes and hitters are catching on, and that's where he gets in trouble, especially with the fastball, trying to blow it by batters. So the last few games for Kirby, May 13th, versus the Royals, seven innings in that one. Three hits, no runs, six Ks, a quality start. May 19th at the O, six innings, got the loss. Nine hits, five runs in that one, three Ks. And May 24th, at the Nats, six innings, got the loss again, six hits, five runs, a walk, three Ks. So he's been bombed the last two outings pretty much here is George Kirby. But like I said, if he could just work that zone a little bit less with the strikes and work more of his breaking balls, I think he could be good and get back to form because he was a top prospect a few seasons ago in this round, the system. And we've seen, obviously, successful seasons out of him. So his next outing's actually here today versus the Astros where their offense is starting to get things going. And we know this Astro team, second half of the year, they really turned things on. So right now, it's definitely a tougher outing. But if he gets hit bad once again, I think fantasy owners could even get Kirby cheaper. After today's outing, the next pitcher, I look to buy and trade for is Pablo Lopez of the Minnesota Twins. So Lopez had a great year in his first season last season with the Minnesota Twins. But so far this year, it hasn't been good at all. 60 innings, 4-5 and five record, 69 Ks. 5.25 ERA, 1.17 whip, and five quality starts. But the last couple weeks, one of the worst pitches in the league. 16 innings, 0-3 record, 14 Ks, a 9 ERA, 1.69 whip, and a quality start. So last year was a great year for Lopez. 11-8 and eight with a 3.66 ERA, a whopping 234 Ks, and 20 quality starts. But so far this season, he hasn't been good at all, especially the last two outings. He's been hit pretty bad is Pablo Lopez so this is a perfect time to go out there and get him because he's still an innings eater in my opinion he's still someone that could be a top of the rotation type of pitcher for fantasy owners once he gets going and he obviously pitches as well in a division where the hitting isn't all that great in the central with teams like the White Sox one of the worst team in the league the Kansas City Royals obviously Cleveland Guardians I know they're having a decent year Detroit Tigers middle of the pack offense I think Pablo Lopez could get back on track I know his next outing is May 31st at the Astros, where they're one of the better offenses in the league and starting to get things going. But I still believe Lopez can help fantasy owners and be a very effective starter. The next pitch is his teammate, Bailey Ober, of the Minnesota Twins. So last year, Ober, he was pretty good in a full year of workload. 144 in a third, 8-6 and six record with a 3.43. But this year, 52 innings, good win-loss record, 5-2, and two, 54 Ks, but a 4.33 ERA, a 1.04 whip. And four quality starts in the last couple weeks for over nine innings, one and one record, nine Ks, seven ERA, a 1.78 whip. So with over struggling the last few outings here, he's another pitcher I think you could get by low. And the same things, like I said, with Lopez, he's in a division where the offense isn't all that great. Ober, he's gone out there for the most part this season, and he's been good, but the last three out of four outings haven't been all that great. May 12th to Toronto, six innings, got the win. A hit, no runs, 10 Ks, a quality start. May 18th at the Guardians, four innings, got the loss. Eight hits, five runs, a walk, four Ks. And May 24th versus the Rangers, five innings, got the win. Four hits, two runs, three walks, five Ks. He's only had one quality start in the last five outings. He is barely over. So he's not going that deep into games. Teams are starting to hit him pretty decently over the last few weeks. But like I said, I like Ober's stuff in here today versus the Kansas City Royals. I think he could go out there and have a decent outing. And if he doesn't, his value goes down even more where fantasy owners could go out there and get him. So right now, where Ober's been under the radar the last couple seasons, and now he's pretty much been a mid-pitcher at best. He's a pitcher to go by this week. The next pitcher, Blake Snell of the San Francisco Giants. So Blake Snell, in his first year with San Francisco, hasn't been good. And he just came off the injured list. And so far, it's been a train wreck. 19 innings, 0-3 record. 24 Ks, a 10.42 ERA at two whips. So Blake Snell, he's been batting practice so far this season. Like I said, he just returned from the injured list two starts ago. 
and it has been good results as well at the Pirates and versus the Philadelphia Phillies. We know Snell won the Cy Young last year, but obviously no spring training. We've seen these pitchers struggle this season, like a Jordan Montgomery, like a Blake Snell who didn't have a spring training, and now it's not paying dividends for Snell to get a better contract next season if he opts out or for fantasy owners. So the last few games for Snell, April 19th versus the Diamondbacks, four and two-thirds, got the loss. Nine hits, five runs, a walk, three Ks. May 22nd at Pittsburgh, three and a third, no decision. Four hits, four runs, four walks, five Ks. And May 27th versus Philly, four innings. Five hits, three runs, two walks, seven Ks. So Snell, he's pretty much in spring training form, it seems like here, where he's not going deep into games. He's been batting practice for the most part this season. And I think right now is a perfect time to go out there and get him because last season he did get off to a very slow start with Blake's now. And then second half, obviously, lights out. Great performances to win the Cy Young in the end. So right now, Blake's now, while he's been BP, like I said, he's a buy low pitcher this week. And the fifth and final pitcher I look to buy and trade for is Dylan Cease of the San Diego Padres. He was a nice acquisition, no doubt about it for this Padre team right before the season started where the White Sox all off season were trying to dangle him and trade him. And on the year, his numbers are solid, 65 and two thirds, five and four record, 82 Ks, a 3.29 ERA, 0.96 whip and six quality starts. But the last couple weeks, he's starting to give up runs and he's starting to get hit 16 in the third, I went to record 22 Ks, 6.61 ERA, 1.59 whip. So I think that one cease is gonna be fine but hey, for some reason, if the Dylan Cease owner isn't happy and trying to get him off his roster after two bad outings in a row, this is a perfect time to get him because his next outing is May 31st at Kansas City, where I believe he could go out there and get things going for this Padre team and get back to form. And the last few games, May 14th versus the Rockies, five and two thirds got the loss. Five hits, three runs, a walk, eight Ks. May 20th at the Braves, four innings, no decision. Nine hits, five runs, three walks, five Ks. And then May 25th, first the Yankees, six and two thirds, got the loss. Eight hits, four runs, nine Ks. I know the last two outings, very tough matchups at Premier Offense's top five in the league at the Atlanta Braves and the New York Yankees. But like I said, Cease could get back to form at the Royals. And this is a perfect time to go out there and get him because he hasn't had a quality start now in his last three outings, is Dylan Cease. And only two quality starts in his last six. So right now, while he has been middle of the pack, even though his strikeout rate still amongst the league leaders in fantasy baseball and in the league here. Just that ERA, he's got to get down a little bit. And the innings, he's got to pitch deeper into games this season. I believe he will. And still adjusting over there in San Diego. So right now, like I said, well, his value's down a little bit. He's a perfect buy low pitcher this week. So that's a few pitches I look to buy and trade for for week nine of the fantasy baseball season.